Welcome back to Runiverse, I'm Andrew, and today I'm playing Dawn. This is a game in which players are working cooperatively to build a village until, possibly, one or more of the players decides to change their minds and become a scoundrel, which is done in secret and revealed at the end of the game. Depending on how many points the ally players collectively earned, the ally players may win and any number of scoundrels who are there would lose, or if the ally players fail to reach their goal, which changes based on how many allies there are, the scoundrel with the most saved treasure would win. This copy was provided to me by the publisher because I thought that mechanism was really interesting. It has hidden roles, although it starts as a cooperative game, but it doesn't actually have social deduction necessarily from the outset. Although I imagine the most fun games would involve a lot of table talk, players talking and arguing, and you could end up with some deductive elements going on for sure. Um, based on what cards appear where, and we'll see how that plays out over the course of the game. Speaking of playing out over the course of the game, I'm gonna do something I've never done before, which is I'm gonna to try to play as three players. I do a lot of solo, and I'm happy to play two sides of a duel, for example, but here I'm actually gonna to try to play three players semi-cooperatively. So I'm gonna play as this character here. The game, the characters don't really do anything, but uh, they did come up with these nice art, art cards, which will provide a nice reference for whose turn it is at any given time. That'll be me, second player, and third player. I've set up for a three player game, which means we've got five of these cards out. If there are four players, there would be six of those. And if there were five players, there would be eight. There is a two player variant, which has slightly tweaked rules, but the three to five player game plays basically the same, just with a different number of these cards out. We're going to play over six rounds. The final round will not have these cards, but otherwise we're going to be putting out a new five from this deck every round. And I'm just gonna start and then explain what's going on up here as we go. So first of all, every player's got nine cards. Two of them are these skulls, which are called wounds. They're the same on both sides. You can see who has how many of wounds, although everybody starts with two. And then we've got a hand of cards that look kind of like this. So here I've got three greens, a yellow, two red, and a blue, and they have different amounts of treasure on the left. Let's take a look at one such card. It's a green card with two treasures. Here's a green card with three treasures, for example, or a green card with no treasures. And during my turn, I can play all my cards, except for wounds. Actually, wounds cannot be used. And I can put these cards face down on any of these five town cards or these four major buildings. This card is called the Barracks, and it has a requirement of 12 treasure. These two are both called manors and they have requirements of 11 treasure. So these are three of the higher requirement uh, buildings that are already out here. And then these two on the edges are called plague cards. This one requires three greens and this one requires four car green cards. So one thing I might do during my turn is put this card here and I'd put it face down so that other players don't know what I put. But at the end of the round, uh, all the cards that anyone's put there would be revealed. And if there are at least three green cards, then this plague would be avoided. Basically, we played enough healing to avoid the plague. Otherwise, this card's going to get flipped over and we'll suffer the negative consequences. This little tip card, or reference card, shows what is possible. So on plagues uh, with three green requirements, it could be nothing, it could be everyone gets a wound, or it could be someone gets two wounds, or two people get one wound, I think. On the plague four, it could either be nothing happens or everyone gets a wound. And then you can see the different breakdown these values are points that would be scored by the allied players at the end of the game. And then there's other negative things, barbarians and bandits. So I might put this here and hopefully my play allies would assume that I've put a green card there. And then maybe they each also put one green card. And as long as we each put one green card, then at the end of the round, it will, will reveal all three green cards and avoid it. But if somebody snuck in a red or blue card, then the three card requirement would not be met. And in fact, if for example, each of us did put one card there, at the end of the round, those will be shuffled before revealing. So we won't know who put the odd one out in place and caused us to suffer those consequences. Or I could put three cards down right off the bat and just tell everyone that I've taken care of it, which may or may not be true. But at the end of the round, if nobody else puts any cards there and those are revealed, then of course everyone will know that whatever they are came from me. Plus, at the beginning of the game, we're all allies. I guess anyone could decide right off the bat they want to be a scoundrel, and that'll become part of the strategy of the game, which I don't know yet. Because I guess you could, that's just up to the person if they just want to be a scoundrel right off the bat, but 
I imagine it'd be more like toward the middle of the end of the game, you start to realize, I wonder if we're actually going to get enough points as allies. Maybe I should start uh, hoarding some resources for myself so that at least I can win. So we'll be playing cards to these uh, during this round, at the end of this round. All five of these will be revealed and resolved. Actually, not necessarily revealed. These would be revealed. These are not revealed until the end of the game if they are successfully built by playing the requisite number of treasures. So this card needs 12 treasures. So I could, similarly to the plague, if I put a green card, this instead doesn't care the color of the card, it just cares how many treasure symbols are there. So I could put this card here and provide three. Of course, again, hidden. I could put this card and provide zero. And there are even cards in the deck that provide negative treasures. 12 is a pretty high cost. It's the highest one in the game. And back to the reference card, you can see that it could be worth 18, 15, or just four points. Those points are revealed if, or at the end of this round, the cards played to it are revealed if at least 12 resources apply. This is set aside into the town. And then at the end of the game, all the cards that were successfully built are revealed. And that's when we see how many points we have. And we need at least 30 per ally player. If any players turn scoundrel, they we do not need 30 points for them. Woo! It's a lot of talking. But in addition to these, which will be refreshed every round, we have these four, which will stay the same every round. They'll only be resolved at the end of the game. In fact, round six is dedicated to them, where there will be no other town cards in round six. We will just be resolving these. So take a quick look at them. This one needs six green cards, but you have to remove a green card for every red put there, so it can be sabotaged. Uh, that one's worth 10 point per each ally player without any wounds left because wounds can be healed. This one is four points per successfully built building and requires eight yellow cards, but it can be sabotaged with blue cards. This one is just worth a straight up 20 points and needs 18 treasures. Can be sabotaged with negative treasure values. And this one is 30 points straight up, requires 10 blue cards, but it can be sabotaged by both yellow and green. So lastly, we've got the cards each have a special ability. Instead of assigning a card, to something you can discard it for an effect red would let you look at two cards on a great building and optionally discard one so you can get rid of some sabotage or you could sabotage more if you play three green cards you can get rid of one of your wounds or another player's wounds which is beneficial not just for points on this great building but with a hand size of nine it's basically seven because of the two wounds. The, now, those nine cards will be refreshed every round. So if you can get rid of wounds, you get more cards for future rounds. Blue cards are spies. It would let you look at the identity of one of these cards or the, the other side value. And the yellows are wild. They can be used for any of these other effects. And they also meet the resource requirement or the color requirement on plagues and I think barbarians and bandits, which require red and blue respectively. They do not help you with... The great buildings, except for, of course, this one, which requires yellow. So I am tempted to get rid of my own wound, except that that's like a lot of treasures there. There's five. And we've got two plagues out that I wouldn't be helping with. So technically, the plague three is more dangerous than the plague four, and it's easier to get rid of. So I'm going to put one card there, and hopefully my teammates follow my lead. I'm also going to put these cards here, five treasures toward the 12, and hopefully, again, they follow my lead. You see that we're trying to build that. The reds aren't going to be too useful for me because they have no treasures on them in this case, and there's nothing to attack. There's no cards on the great buildings to look at. So I actually skipped something which I was supposed to do, which is that the first thing you do, you take one card and you have to put it into your reserve or, or your supply or something. And so one of your cards each turn, each round is dedicated to that. And that is how, if you want to be a scoundrel, how you would build up your own resources. Now, currently I've put a zero value into my treasure, so I'm not on the track to becoming a scoundrel, but I do have to put a card there. In the future, not only will I put a card there, but I have the option of once per round swapping a card out. So if I change my mind later, I might swatch, swap that zero for a higher value, or I might swap that zero for a negative value um, if I need that red card for something else. For example, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to say I didn't put those yet. I'm going to use the spy action. I'm going to discard this to look here and I don't have to show the other players what it is, but it is a 15. So this is something I want to build. So maybe I would say I maybe I would tell everyone, hey, we want to build this for sure. I could be lying, but I'm not. And you know what? I'm instead going to save this yellow card into my supply. I'm doing things out of order, but I think that's OK. So I'm going to save this here instead. And at the end of the round, I'm just going to disc or at the end of my turn, I'm just going to discard these two. 
Uh, you don't have to keep the cards you don't want in your hand except for the wounds. I'm not totally sure if these discards are face up. I assume this one has to be face up because I use it for an ability. But I'm not sure about these. I would probably play that these discards would be face down in case you want to hide anything. But it's not clear either way what orientation the discard pile is supposed to be facing. So I'll just do it like that. I could have put the yellow card here or anywhere or not here. That would be useless, but maybe in one of these two spots. But it could be one treasure here or it could be one of eight here. But I can always do that later. And the red cards were completely useless. So I think saving it for later makes sense because there are cards with negative treasures that I might not want to have to play. And being able to swap that to my reserve later makes sense. So now I'm going to play player two's turn and not show you what they do or what they're doing necessarily. They'll say, okay, yeah, sure. I'll play along with this plague. I will tell you that I'm playing along with this. I'm going to put this card here, this great building. I'm going to save this card into my reserve. And actually, I'm going to put this one here. I'm going to put this one in my reserve. And I'm going to discard this one without showing it because that's how I'm going to play. Player three says, all right, I guess it's on me to finish this plague. I guess these aren't going to be successful, so I'm not even going to touch those. And sure, I'll contribute some more toward this building and this one as well. And uh, play these here. And hopefully everyone did their part. So everyone's... Oh, they have to play a card here too. All right, so maybe take back one of those and put it. Now everybody's played their cards. So at the end of the round, we would shuffle these up and reveal them. And it's three cards, three greens, matches the three green requirement. So these are discarded. This is flipped over. I guess, I don't know if it's flipped over. Well, I guess you actually don't look at it. You would just discard it without looking which means you don't have as much information as if you actually suffer from one. But since I looked, I'll go ahead and show you. In this case, nothing would have happened, but the players aren't actually supposed to know that because they did solve it. So that's gone, which is a good thing. Uh, these are just all discarded because they weren't contributed toward. This would have its card shuffled up and they're looking for the 12 resources. So it would shuffle so we don't know who played what. And we've got two, four, six, eight, 11, 13. So 13 will meet 12. And hopefully this is a 15 point barracks, but the players don't actually know. This is just gonna be set aside until the end of the game. And then they will get to look and see how many points that was worth. These are discarded. This was not dealt with. So this is revealed and it says all players get a wound, which is a problem because now they all have three wounds, and when they draw up to nine now, they will only have six cards to work with instead of seven. So we get one, two, three, four, five more cards off the top of the deck. Everybody's gonna get dealt only six more cards, just enough to refill their hand, whatever number that would be, but in this case it is six for everybody. And we can add those, and then first player passes to player two who will now take his turn first well since nobody got rid of any wounds so now we see a new type of card is the barbarian barbarian three means either nothing happens a building could be destroyed or there could be two wounds dealt out and it looks like there are five different barbarians with the three symbols so 20 percent nothing happens 40 percent destroy a building and 40 percent two wounds since only one building has been built that could be dangerous we do have the 10 cost building, which is the lodge, but then there's another barracks and another manor. So we don't have any of the cheaper buildings yet, the farm or the market. I think he's going to do a swap with his hand, add another card, which is mandatory. I'm going to say that he's adding three cards to completely deal with the barbarian. Nobody has to worry about it. He's also going to make his fair share contribution toward the plague and make a nice contribution toward the second barracks. And with just three wounds left, he'll pass the turn. Blue player is going to play a card and make a swap to her reserve. She said she's also making a contribution toward the plague. And she says she's going to make a really big contribution here. And she's going to help out with this great building. All right, which brings it back to our turn. Now we get to go last. If everyone's telling the truth, this is done and this is almost done. And this is probably almost done. We've got three green cards two of which have negatives on them. So that'd be a great way to put it, uh, 
place to put it. I can swap with my reserve, which is a gold with a single resource. And gold is wild. Uh, again, not for the great buildings, but it is wild for the purpose of card abilities and also for helping defeat these. So we could put the gold here, but having a green negative resource, probably the best use is on Plague. The three wounds, of course, are useless. Still have to put something in the reserve. Looks like we're not getting rid of wounds very quickly, so this doesn't seem very valuable. We might just leave that. This is probably almost done, so let's just add a two to it just to make sure assuming everyone was telling the truth uh, i guess let's add this to our reserve and green with minus two resources on it and now we've got 11 or eight. Oh, that's only eight and if we had a little more we could just complete one of these by ourselves but what else are we going to do with all these resources if we took this two back which isn't allowed but i'm just i'm allowing take backs during the scope of my own turn since i'm by myself here if i kept this i could do 10 all by myself and then i don't have to rely on anybody's lies here and the lodge is worth 12 12 10 10 6 or 4 but the barracks is worth 18 15 or 4. every building type has a 4 and we don't know which one this was i don't think this would help yeah it's just a 1 or a negative 2 so these are higher value so maybe instead i put the green one here because it's still a 2 and then i can put the blue here and the yellows here which brings it up to six cards out of the needed eight yellows so if they're all yellow that one's almost done which is four per building although we're only completing our second building here so that's only eight points and that's assuming we don't get hit by a barbarian or bandit later that destroys one of our buildings hopefully we can build some cheaper buildings because these 12s have been tough on our resources and we don't even know how many points they're going to be worth and if they are worth a lot of points and it happens to get destroyed that's going to be a huge bummer but anyway everyone is done now so these are not built they'll be discarded buildings are technically done first so we'll shuffle these and reveal them we're going to need 12 resources we got three six nine twelve fourteen so it looks like our two was unnecessary there and uh our allies seem to be telling the truth so we'll add that to our town resolve these hopefully everybody put a green or yellow because yellow is wild for that purpose and three will complete this so we don't look at it just discard it and then three reds here hopefully and got red red yellow i will say there's some ambiguity in the rules regarding these wilds i think i'm going to continue playing it like this uh, but i'm not 100 percent confident so if you check this tip card it shows the different actions the cards can do and then for wild the yellow it says can be used as wild when taking any of the above actions except for great buildings it doesn't say except for town actions but the above actions are clearly these three which is not what i'm using it for here however that verbiage is basically the same in the rule book where it talks about player actions and it says you can swap cards contribute to a building and then the next page contribute to a great building heal a wound raid a great building spy in a building and then again it says wilds can be used in place of any other resource when taking the above actions with the exception of great buildings so again now here above is kind of ambiguous because the above actions would technically just be spy or raid but if you go back through all of the actions it would include contributing to a building or threat so i'm going to keep playing it as it is but you may decide to do that differently or look up a ruling but because we got three reds i'm going to discard these discard this without looking at it and we made progress we made progress on our great buildings and we added to our town we avoided anything negative pass the first player deal out the town tiles for round three two bandits and a couple of the cheaper buildings so we got a six and eight and a ten and deal six cards to everybody and then player three can go first so I feel like it's at this point where I might start thinking, okay, do I want to be a scoundrel? Or maybe you make that decision at the beginning. I don't know. But we can pretty much forfeit these points, I'm pretty sure. Because I don't think we're going to get rid of all nine wounds, plus however many more we potentially get before the end of the game. This is currently almost built, but it's only worth like eight points. This is less than halfway built, but it would be worth 30 points. And both of these two 12s, again, that would... There are three 12 cost buildings. One's eight, 15, one's 18, one's 15, one's four. It's an average of 37 
for 37 divided by three, it's like 12 points average. So this is an average of 24 points, which doesn't really make sense. It can't actually be 24 points, but I could, my pro, my thinking is probably make sure to get more buildings, make sure this gets finished and we'll probably win. Our allies will probably win with 30 points per ally at the end of the game. Or do we pivot away from that and start sabotaging some stuff? And I, I would say all three players are playing that. I'm not gonna reveal player threes, strategy but that would be what everyone is probably thinking every round is at what point do i think maybe the allies can't make it or can i make it so that the allies can't make it in which case i definitely need to build up my stores he's decided to play here and here basically saying we need to deal with all of these let's make it happen she says she's going to do halfway on this one she does have to place into her storeroom and she's going to put two more over here on this great building putting it at five out of ten so now it's our turn let's see what's in our hand two greens two yellows a blue a red we got four positive resources and two negative our storage is a negative two green and a yellow i wonder if it's too late to start healing ourselves how about we have to heal ourselves and put six greens there so so player one the, over here she said she contributed half to this tempted to take our word for it and contribute the other half not loving the fact that we have so much negative and i have to play more but i also want to contribute here we can only make one swap per round so i was thinking of adding another green but having two green there doesn't necessarily make sense because you can only get one back out so at this point basically at least one card if not two are pretty much locked in do we want to be locked in with a negative value maybe we take the negative out and put the positive in but then what are we going to do with these two negative greens? That doesn't seem good either. We've got a red. Let's make progress on the four here. And you know what? Let's just commit. I'm going to do that to do a swap. So I've got two yellows. And I'm going to use the wild to just make sure we finish this. And I have to add here. I'm just going to go full negative And then say, hey, this is done. If you tell, tell player three, this is done. If you trust us, let's go ahead and finish this one. And... It's cheap you should be able to handle the finish the last six on your own hopefully it's all you got to do in addition to if you got two more red cards here that would be great and my storage is pure negative so i'm really counting on the ally victory here player three says sure i can finish this off i can't help here i'm gonna add to my reserve i'm gonna make a swap and i'm gonna add three more cards over here putting it up to eight now, I haven't been using these actions very much at all. The spy, the heal, the attack. I feel like if you got more experience in this game and you knew what you were doing, you would know when and why to do those things, especially with cards that have negative resources on them. But for now, I'm just trying to get a sense of everything. So that finishes player three's round. I'm saying I'm trying to changing who's player one, who's player two, player three based on this. But I guess from the beginning of the name game, technically he's named player two and she's named player three. Just currently she's player one and he's player three. So now we can see that this didn't get built. This uh, is clearly not going to be eight, but I assume technically it would be revealed anyway. And you can see that we did contribute to it, even though it didn't get completed. And so that's discarded. This can be checked to see if player one and we were telling the truth and we both played threes. So that six will do it. This is added to our town stack or village, completed village. And then we can do these, just shuffle these up and we're looking for reds. One, two, wild will do it. And there we go. We can discard this barbarian and these three. We've got wild, red, and red, and this one is defeated as well. So at least we didn't lose anything. First player will pass back to us. We'll play out five more for round four. We've got one barbarian and four buildings. There's one farm that just requires six, a lodge which requires 10, and two markets which require eight. Six more cards for each player, five, five, five and six we are playing with fewer cards than we would potentially be able to again because we are we're all just holding on to these three wounds we really can't turn scoundrel again because of all that such our poor or such poor um reserve is purely negative we need at least seven resources to even be a scoundrel and we've got 
negative 5. So we're really committed to ally. We can make one swap, so if we want a green or blue card, we can get it. But I've got three yellows, and I'm thinking about just finishing this major building. Although the yellows are a main source of resources this round, because this is one and then negative three, whereas we've got two twos here if we want to actually build something, which might be better. We can definitely say, okay, we're going to start on her. We can even say we're going to make two progress here by putting that wild down. And we can put a blue, it's a negative resource, so there's no reason not to just put it here. That'll put it at nine, assuming everyone was telling the truth. Oh, I do have to put something here too. So I guess we'll do the single resource. It's not about the resource, it's just about the fact that it is less than two, which we can now commit four toward a 10, hopefully. Say, so, hey, let's, let's do it. Let's do a 10, you guys, we can do it. I'm committing as the first player here. Player one says, all right, I can help with that. Also gonna help with this. Let's make that six. Although we might wanna save some of those for the final round because in the final round, you can only build these. And the chances that we just have straight up 18 resources to just build this or enough greens to completely handle this is unlikely. So we'll probably want to have some negative valued treasures to put onto these just in case. So maybe somebody at the table says that and we calm down, save the finishing that until the last round, even assuming everybody wants to have them be successful. With that said, player two is going to put this into their storage and say i can't add that much but i'll put all three cards here so now there are five cards there now player three is like okay well how much does this going to take to finish because there's already five cards there so she's going to put one into a reserve it's okay well um two more cards these two should finish it off and you're right, let's start building this one now. So I'll put three cards into that. Uh, I could build a building, but or almost build a building, but not quite. So let's just start on that one. Then at the end of the round, these are discarded. These will be shuffled and revealed. We're looking for a 10. And we've got one, one, three, four, six seven so it's not built so wait who played what somebody somebody put two or three cards in and so there's three blanks so maybe that was him because he was the one who played three cards right or wait did they both play three? Uh oh this is discarded and then what about this one then you got wild red red okay so at least the barbarians dealt with but we didn't make progress okay so we pass first player and we play round five um and deal everybody six two two five five six and then this guy gets to be player one this round and we see our first bandit so these require blues to be defeated you can see this one is three blues and then just two little farms six each plus a bandit and a plague though so this already has three cards toward building it although now we're wondering who's lying to us because if it's her this might not have much progress on it at all these still need to be completed as well although it's player two's turn so he's probably having similar thoughts unless he's the one lying i gotta think for him his perspective here he's got to play to his reserve he says okay well there's a lot of bad stuff coming out let's definitely put this here add the fifth card to the reserve and let's do another card here and he says he's going to deal with the barbarian by himself so there you go player two now the lady she says she can contribute one to uh, almost finish that and she can also contribute one here she's going to add to her reserve and she will almost complete one of the farms almost complete huh so hopefully this is done this is almost done got this so i can finish it hopefully did she play to that he played two and she played one if they're lying I don't know if I can trust any of these cards. What's in my reserve? Maybe I just have to do something by myself. I've got three greens and a blue, so I get one of those out. So I could switch and get grab a blue, and then I could have three blues, and I could deal with the bandit by myself. I can also deal with the barbarian by myself, but that's a huge waste of cards. Do I have... I don't have any positives in here either. I have a one. But my, with my entire hand, I can't even build something. Three, four, five. I can't even build... a farm by myself i mean i've got to put this green here right what else am i going to do with it do i try to deal with the bandit on my own do i try to deal with the barbarian on my own can i trust any of these cards 
Well, they both played here, so right, at least one of those has to be real. And there's no negative, so at the very least, they could, if they're just non-red cards, then they just don't contribute. They're not negative like some of the gray buildings effects. So if I play two reds here, pretty sure that would finish it. So maybe I play these two reds, and that would pretty much guaranteed to finish that. I still have to play to my reserve, and I can do a swap. Forget who put one and who put two here. It's the same deal. Like if I put two more greens, that's guaranteed to finish that, right? But I can't put two greens and put three blues. This one I can't trust. But since these were combined, I can trust those. So let's try to put two greens here. And that means I need to grab a green from here. And I guess I'm gonna add a blue here. And I'll put two greens here. Just in case it finishes it, I'll put a blue, oh, I can't finish it, just one. So I could use it to spy. I could have spied first to reveal one of these, but there's no benefit to that because, well, I mean, if I spied this, I wouldn't then be able to complete it, so it wouldn't matter. If I spy this, it doesn't matter because I'm already pretty much committed to completing it because I'm playing negatives. So the resources wouldn't be any good anywhere else except for up here. But again, I don't think we're going to make it. So I may as well just put those here. I could look at this before I commit my reds, but I only have like one resource anyway. But I guess that's better than the zero. So let's do that. I'm going to look at this barbarian with a spy. This is destroy the lowest cost building. That would destroy our farm here. So I guess I do want to finish this to make sure. So same plan. And hopefully three finishes this. So if she committed at least one, two, three, then it's going to be done. So I guess that, oh, I didn't, no, I didn't play uh, to my reserve. Oh no. So that was another reason to not play this. So yeah, it seems so harsh to use these as their actions because the cards are so limited. But that might be because I still have three wounds in everybody. So maybe I put this in my reserve and we just don't finish this building that feels bad too or i could just gamble here that maybe one more red will finish this although i know that it's destroyed the lowest cost building and if we don't finish this and we destroy one that's a huge negative or i can not put both of these here again i'm doing a lot of take backs but imagine you just be doing all this in your head until you finally commit to playing everything i just I, i'm just gonna keep it and put this into my reserve I can swap for it next turn to be able to play it up to there. So that ends the round. This is discarded. We'll try to resolve this building with just the three cards. So she said she didn't finish it. So we have to assume she didn't finish it, but let's just see how much she got. Neg zero, she played zero, three cards and a value of zero. Well, that's very suspicious. So now we pretty much know she is trying to be a scoundrel. And I say trying because you're not actually a scoundrel unless you have at least three resources worth of value in your reserve. So she may have that, she may not. But for now, at least, we just all we know is that she is attempting. That was definitely a sabotage, which means we probably played safely, but these are not safe. So I'm just going to go left to right. And I think I think we covered the ground. Even if she played two of the cards, we played two more. So we played enough to cover our bases here, except for this bandit. But one green, two green, three green, four green. All right. So something weird went on there. Maybe she just played the one card to that one. So she was the blue, which means I think she played two here, but we accounted for that. So anyway, this is discarded. This, we will reveal a green. Was she the one who also played to there? So that's adding up. Nothing happens though. So we actually didn't suffer any negatives. And then for the barbarian, we get red, red, wild. Okay, so this was, did he play all of that? I totally just forget. I feel like memory is important here as well. I'm trying to play three hands. You'd think I would know what everybody's doing, and I do kind of, but I also forget a lot. So this one is discarded with no effect, and players didn't actually suffer anything. But they also didn't build anything. They got no benefits. And now we're going into the final round. All we benefited is that we know she is a big liar. So now there are no tiles here. There's nothing else going here, which means this is a maximum of 12. But in this round, all we're doing is playing to the great buildings and our scoundrel lady is gonna go first oops that's only five and this will probably be a quick one because now we pretty much know where everyone's at although i think she's gonna play this one she's actually gonna do the attack so this is secretly look at two cards on a great building and remove 
one optional. So the rule book makes it clear that those are at random. So we're going to shuffle these up and pick a random two that she will get to look at. Uh, if people have been mixing it up and they're not all blues, then she might find one uh, and she would be able to discard it if she were a an ally. But in this case, she's actually a scoundrel. And so she's actually hoping to see at least one blue that she can discard. So she will discard one leaving eight blues out of the required 10. So that was her attack. She's going to make a swap in order to attack again. And I'm just going to draw two because I already shuffled it. And again, she found a blue to discard. She has to add to her reserve. And then she's going to make some contributions to these buildings, which uh, may or may not be the allies benefit. Now it's our final turn. This is what we're working with. So blue can help, but not a lot. Greens and yellows are negative and reds are neutral there. As many resources as we could, we would want to build up here, but now we know that she's the one who put three there and we can't trust those three she played. So it's really unlikely we're going to get to 20 or to 18 there, especially since we have basically nothing to contribute. This one needs yellows. So let's do that. Although these reds, the best thing they can do is attack. So we could try to attack and remove some of the cards she presumably just added. I think she added two here. So let's try to attack here twice and see what we can do. What do I have? I've got, I did save a three value. I can't switch to scoundrel. Three, four, two, zero, negative one. So even if I swapped out a negative two for a three, which I don't even have, I'd still only be at four and that is not scoundrel. I'm stuck as an ally, which I expected. I'm not trying to switch. I'm just doing the math. So shuffling up this great building to resolve an attack. Probably use the negative one first and yellow and a blue. So we actually hit a yellow. We get to get rid of her sabotage. Do I want to go again? Yeah. Well, the other option would be to build, which is really unlikely. I mean, I guess we could ask player three, like, can you finish this? But I can't really trust him. We can either add a lot to it or not. I don't want to count on him. I could add like five. I could add six if I pulled a two out of here or I have a three here. So three, four, five, six. I could add six to this toward 18. But plus this might be zero to negative with the three cards there. And it's unlikely he'd be able to do the other 12 plus. So I don't think the resources make sense. We'll probably put the yellows here. May as well just put a, we have to play to our reserve. So we'll play this to our reserve. And yeah, let's do this attack. Reveal two, blue, and blue. I could swap out for another attack, but I think it just makes sense to just add a blue. So let's just do that and add these two yellows here, which makes 10 cards out of eight needed. I forget how many she put there, but that might just be it. Although now it's this player's turn and he has his decisions to make. So he's going to add to his reserve, make a swap with his reserve. What is the number here? That nine. So he's going to put two more, which means he's probably an ally because if it were a nine and he's the last player and he's a scoundrel, he could just not play anything and it's guaranteed to fail. So he played two cards. They're probably both blue. Actually, before he does that, he is going to play some attacks. Screen's probably going to be wasted. He'll not. I mean, it doesn't matter. Well, no, yeah, we'll put it here. And then he is going to attack this twice. Let's see, blue, green. He gets to discard a green. And then again, don't think there are any non blues left. So that's gone. He won't discard them. Now they're exactly eight, and he's going to play two. And then that's the end of the game. So I will say, now we're going to start revealing things. He was calculating on that last turn he could have switched to scoundrel he was kind of saving up resources it doesn't look like it here but he made the card he added and the card that he swapped uh, he could have hit i think nine resources and so this is the part of the game where we would reveal our reserves and of course she is trying to be a scoundrel she's got two four seven ten eleven fourteen which is kind of what he thought like she's probably been a scoundrel for a couple rounds so that last minute switch, he could have hit like nine resources, which technically puts him into scoundrel territory, but it he probably couldn't compete with her. And he felt like if he, they were both scoundrels, the threshold the ally players need, which would be just us by ourselves, would only be 30 points. And with two 12 pointers, it's feasible that we would hit 30 points. And he didn't want to um, kind of switch at the last minute only to lose two 
the ally. So allies is anyone with seven or fewer or fewer than seven resources stored, and a scoundrel is anyone with seven or more. So she's the only one with seven or more. She is the scoundrel. It doesn't have to be a scoundrel, but there is. There can be more than one scoundrel. But and then you can see if the allies the allies win if they got at least 60 points in this case because we have two remaining allies. Again, if he had switched to scoundrel, there would have been only one remaining ally, and we would have only needed 30 points to win. So now we need to count up how many points are there. Oh, and of course we can check our resources. We got negative one, negative two, negative four, negative six, negative five, negative two. So I did end up saving this red. I could have used it as an attack, but I forget what was going on, but I just felt like the colors of the other cards were better. I didn't save that for resources. That three was the last card that I saved just because I didn't need a red, I think. So obviously this one did not get built. This one obviously did not get built, but just for fun, let's see what she did contribute. She contributed negative four resources to this great building. So these are the potential ones to get built. This one needs eight yellows to build. Every blue will be a negative. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ooh, eight, nine. So nine will do it. That is built. It's worth four points per built building, which is going to be 12 points. And then this one is worth 30 points if it's built and it needs 10 blues, minus one for every yellow and green. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, exactly. So this one's done. It's 30 points. Now with 42 points, the allies need 60. So that's 18 more points they need from these three buildings. Three is very meager. Six, a farm is a maximum of 10, and it is a six, not the worst. That puts the players up to 48, or the allies. And just for some tension, instead of flipping it over the barracks, the 12 costers are worth 18, 15, and four. There are three of them. One's 18, one's 15, one's four. So what are these two? Well, even if we got the four and the 15, we would still win. So, and there's the 18 and the 15. So that's a total of 73 points for the allies, and the allies share the victory. Scoundrel's the loser, and you tear up her card if you want to. I wouldn't. So that is a three-player playthrough of Dawn. I'm not sure if you're the scoundrel if you need to start sabotaging earlier. I also feel like the player count is pretty important because even though you do change the number of the center buildings, the center town cards, you always have the same four major buildings. So that seems like an interesting dynamic. I guess it's just expected that you don't necessarily build them all in lower player count games. But in higher player count games, maybe you can build more of them. Maybe a four player game, you normally build three. And in a four or five player count game, you normally build four or at least attempt to build four. It was a close call on those buildings, especially the blue one, which was 30 points. So with one fewer blue card, that would have been a win for the scoundrel. So it was a pretty close game. It was one blue card away or two yellow cards away. Or maybe if there hadn't been two of the three twelves, maybe it had been a couple of the manners, the 11 costers. And we got the low ball, the four and the 10, for example. I think that would have been a loss, which comes down kind of to luck. But I mean, that's part of the thrill of the games, the gambling and, and trying to gauge your bets and see how things fall. So I would not recommend this game for solo play, but hopefully you got to see how kind of it plays at three players and multiplayer. You can imagine four or five, what kind of thought process you'd be going through. And if you like any kind of social deduction, or maybe you don't like social deduction, but you're interested in like, hidden roles without that much type of social deduction necessarily, or not as much as some of the games that focus more on it. This is probably a kind of a lighter, quicker way to play through an interesting game with a town building theme. Make a couple final comments just about the production. It comes with these five envelopes that say things on them, like open when all great buildings have been built. So I wouldn't open it because only two of the great buildings had been built. But if you play a game where all four are, you'd open this and it feels like there might be a few extra of these types of cards inside you can add to your game. Of course, you could just open these envelopes right off the bat to play the complete game out of the box. But if you feel like you might play this a bunch of times and you wanna have a growing experience, a growing changing experience with your group, these could be cool. So there's also open when you've built th the Oracle three times. I think the Oracle is the one that requires blues. So I should actually check off one of those, which I might actually do that. We've got, I don't, I didn't expect this to be a legacy game. So I didn't come with the mental preparation that I was going to be writing on components, but yeah, I might write on it. Open when the players won a game as a scoundrel three times. So no check mark there. Got open when the 
allies have won three times, so one check mark there, and open when one player single-handedly defeats three threats in a round. Oh, no, no check boxes there. So yeah, I got a couple checks and progress toward opening. And it's kind of interesting that it could be opened in different orders, just depending on how your group plays the game and what happens. Feels like there's like maybe two or three of these in each envelope, but I have to open them to find out, which I'm not gonna do right now. My other comments are about the cards and the box. So the cards feel nice and thick. They've got a good snap and sound to them. They do not have linen finish, which I appreciate because I don't like cards with linen finish. They feel bumpy, they get dirty, and they look funny. So I like that these are nice, smooth cards. But yeah, they are nice and thick and durable. Almost too thick. Like, they felt kind of thick to shuffle. They're not actually too thick. That's a weird complaint. But personally, I wouldn't have minded a little bit thinner. Which again, probably in the minority, people love thick cards. So should be happy with these. But my complaint is about the box size. It's a super cute little box. This is actually the bottom of the box or I say bottom, it actually slides into the top of the box. You know what, let's take this top of the box was my camera view, but this slides together like this, which is super cool. I like it, it's got a little cloth tab so you can easily slide that out. And I really like it, except that everything came super tight in here. And if I wanted to sleeve the cards, which I would, they would not fit, which means I can't sleeve the cards, which makes me as a card sleeving person, not thrilled. I know some people don't want boxes to fit sleeve cards because the boxes are too big. In that case, you should be super happy about this game because this box is pretty much as small as it can possibly be and still fit all the components. So something to keep in mind with Dawn. Let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing and bye.